Hi, and welcome to today's Travel Tech Talks hosted by JTV Business Travel. It's Thursday, October 21st, and today is our last Tech Talk of 2021. Um, my name is Etiana Gibbons, and I'm hosting today's session. Today is the final Tech Talk of our three-part series. We've been focusing on how technology is helping our clients return to travel with confidence. I think that we are seeing lots of new trends, and if you were tech savvy before, you need a whole new map these days. Um, recently, we did get to chatting with Serium, right? They're our partners, and we've talked about trip disruption and actionable insights. And last month, we were hanging out with TripKicks and learned about the integrated online booking tool solution when it comes to researching entry requirements, um, COVID restrictions in your online booking tool. Today, we're here with our partners um, at Crisis24, and we're gonna be talking about risk management um, and duty of care. I know by now that everyone is an expert at attending web sessions, so just we're on the same page, let's go through housekeeping rules. It's in listen only mode. So we cannot hear you, but we wanna hear from you. So please participate. And what I mean by that is if you can take a look at your GoToWebinar panel, there should be a little um, questions bar, and you can go ahead and type in your questions in real time. We're interested in what you wanna know. What do you wanna hear from Crisis24? Because we have experts with us today, and we want you to send us your hard-hitting questions. Um, we do hope to cover a lot of FAQs, but any comments or questions, please feel free to tech, uh, chat them in. If you wanna go ahead and, and chat hello, make sure you know where that is. Let us know where you're listening in from. This session is being recorded, so that way you can always access it in our digital library on our JTB Business Travel website. If you have colleagues, um, perhaps, that couldn't join today, but you want them to see how your company might be able to benefit from our technology partner, Crisis24, please feel free to share this recording with them. Um, at this point, I am pleased to introduce our special guest for today, so we're happy to introduce um, Stefan, who is a senior vice president at Crisis24, and Mary, um, a partnerships manager. So welcome, Stefan and Mary. Thank you. Thank you. Um, with the company name like Crisis24 and reading a bit about your team of experts, it's almost as if you are like real live superheroes, but without the game. <laughs> so can you please just share with us like a little bit about your background and what a day at Crisis24 looks like for you. Okay, so we started Crisis24 um, 21 years ago and on the principle of providing very much like the medical assistance, but on the security side, providing the full spectrum of, of security assistance to our, to our clients. And, and our goal was very much to provide, you know, intelligence, tracking, monitoring, and, and response when things go go bad, but with a big focus on uh, on the prevention, on making sure that people can travel safely and and um, around the world. Uh, we worked for almost 15 years uh, as a small business, and in 2014, 2015, we started working with, with Garda World, one of the largest um, security company in the world, and after a year of, of partnership, we decided to uh, join forces, and we were acquired in 2016 by by Gatherworld and, and basically with the ambition to become a global player and which we now have become um, on the market. We've made over the last four years some significant acquisitions uh, with the uh, you know, former um, NYA, Drum Cusack, some EP firms, uh, executive protection companies, and more recently last year, World Aware. So all of these brands are now falling, have phased out and are now an integral part of, of Crisis24. So um, that's a short version, short story of, of Crisis24 ways in Gala World. Yes, and so it, I can imagine that no day is really the same then for you when we ask you what a day looks like. <laughs> a, a bit more because of COVID, uh, to be honest, uh, because we, uh, we, we are obviously traveling uh, significantly less than than before, and uh, but the last uh, absolutely the last 20 years have been very rich in uh, in emotions and um, and and missions around the world. Um, very happy with the fact that um, I don't recall. I mean, very few tragic situations 
um, or some, some tragic situation, but we were able to bring back people safely in in almost every case. So um, I think we have we have definitely made a, made a difference with uh, uh, with our clients. Yes, absolutely. And so um, you have quite an extensive background in this field. Um, and so how did the road really lead you to, to travel and, and the need for Crisis 24 with your history and background? So, I mean, the, one of the starting point was the fact that 20, 25 years ago, there was no central point of contact for corporations when they had problems. And, you know, I, I very often make the comparison with the medical space and you can be injured, you can be sick, uh, you can, you know, um, have a need for, for a specific treatment. But at the end of the day, you know that you need to go and see your doctor. In the corporate world or even in the public side, um, there was no such point of contact at, at the time. And so the, the, the first goal was to tell uh, corporations, public administration, that hey, one day you may have an emergency evacuation in Indonesia in 1999 or you can have an extortion, you can have a kidnapping, you can have a need for an analysis before you enter, enter a specific market. Um, so again, the, the scope was quite large and the goal was to provide this kind of central point of contact to address those different needs. And then w whether we would deliver those needs internally or uh, redirect um, the needs and the request to uh, specialists. So that was the, the initial intent and that remains um, a core of the business because the goal is, you know, kind of a 911. Uh, again, m most of the focus is to avoid getting in those situations, but th they happen. And, yeah. and when they happen, you need to have a point of contact to, to assist you. Yes. So we'll definitely dive more into that. And so just so that our listeners get a little bit of sense of who you are, do you have any fun facts that you can share about yourself, Stefan? Mary, go first. <laughs> now first. it's ladies first, yeah. <laughs> well, let's let Mary introduce herself. So Mary, I know that we, we started diving in, but can you just tell us a little bit about what a day at Crisis 24 looks like for you? Um, you know, tell us a little bit about your role within the company and, and how the roads led you to where you are today. Sure. Um, I started with iJet World Aware in 2012 um, and I've worked in, at the company in various roles for the past eight years. Um, I kind of fell into this space. I was a major um, in political science and uh, found the program, uh, found an internship with the company through my graduate school program and joined um, shortly after my program finished as a full-time employee. So. Um, last year, we were acquired by Garda World and became part of the larger Crisis 24 family. Um, currently, I work as a partnership manager at Crisis 24, helping our partners develop um, duty of care solutions to support their clients. Mm -hmm. And as you said, I would say there's no typical day. You never know what's you know, going to happen from one day to the next. In January 2020, I came back from a Christmas holiday, which is usually pretty quiet. And uh, yeah. The first day back, I had planned and had to plan an intel briefing about the escalating U.S. Iran crisis. And less than a few weeks later, I was, you know, delivering briefings on COVID. So right. um, it's always something different and a new challenge to solve, which I love. Yeah, I I imagine it involves a lot of caffeine, right? To get <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Definitely addicted to my coffee. <laughs> All of these crazy scenarios. Okay, so um, the fun fact, if you had to choose, would it be, um, what's your choice of caffeine? Oh, black coffee. Oh, black coffee. Okay. every morning. <laughs> <laughs> and Stefan, what's your caffeine beverage of choice? I have my, my espresso uh, several times yes. a day. Okay. <laughs> How many do you max out at? Is it five, like a good number? No limit, depending on how long the day is. Okay. Limitless. <laughs> usually okay. when, when we have problems, it starts on the Friday evening, so usually the, the long weekends. Yeah, yeah. Coffee and caffeine is a must. Just a little bit about me for the audiences that I've been with JTB for about four years now. I'm part of the team called Travel Technology Solutions. 
So it's really just a fancy way of saying that we're the team integrating all the technologies to help make the lives easier for our travelers and our travel managers. So um, I know we're excited to jump right in, but before we do that, I'm just going to let here introduce um, a few special topics. He's our general manager here in North America. I know you have some exciting um, new things happening, so the floor is yours. Thank you, Tatiana, and, uh, and a great welcome to you, uh, Stefan and Mary. Really excited to have you, and I can't wait to hear more about um, your world, your exciting world, and how that actually um, really can bring value to, uh, to the travelers and, and uh, the companies that we service. Um, you know, we still live in a very, um, uh, a world full of uncertainty. Um, when you shared about, you know, very um, big things that happened uh, in your world of Crisis 24, when we talk about evacuations and, and health emergencies, uh, those are certainly things that we used to think about when it comes to risk management before uh, the pandemic, but now it really comes home. And I know that you're going to share that even, you know, your solutions can help us when we're home-based um, to provide us with intel, because we could never have imagined a world where the risk is really right at our doorstep with a pandemic that, um, that doesn't skip any town in our world. So um, we at JTB really want to be a partner for, for everybody out there um, in business travel to make sure that um, you have the right tools to navigate uh, the new reality that we all find ourselves in. And uh, we're excited that we see recovery taking place uh, in the, um, in the travel landscape. Um, and so we, we continue to add services and uh, partnerships that can help you to navigate. International travel is really to, you know, about to hopefully um, recover really strongly with uh, the US opening to uh, most travelers, vaccinated travelers. So we want you to be ready uh, and we're here to support you with um, our partnerships. Um, one of that crisis 24 that we'll hear more about uh, we already um, had a great um, session uh, with TripKicks, but we also um, have introduced Sherpa for you to always at any time um, uh, have an easy uh, user interface on our website uh, that you can check what the restrictions are for your travel and for your itinerary. Um, so um, you will hear more about this. Um, you can contact us or your travel advisor if you uh, don't know where to find that. You'll see it on your itineraries too with an easy link to, to check the latest travel restrictions. So you're always gonna know what you can expect when you start traveling again. Um, Sherpa, the website, you'll, you'll have easy access to a, a map, but also you can, uh, with a couple of uh, little um, inputs, you can uh, have it really specified for your itinerary. Um, and as Titiana already mentioned, uh, we uh, had our last uh, tech talks with um, uh, TripKicks which is another convenient tool if you are using concurrent travel. Uh, we can additionally provide this to you where your travelers will have uh, restriction information, destination information right there in the booking process. So they can make a well-informed decision when traveling, when booking travel already about uh, what they're facing, uh, what maybe possible hurdles are, what they have to prepare for. Um, again, really great solution. Um, providing you the intelligence you need right at the time, integrating your booking process. So if you want to find out more, do not hesitate to contact your client development manager and we would love to, uh, to take you here. Um, more is coming as we continue to um, be your partner when uh, recovery continues and we're all hitting the road again. Um, so I'll hand over again back to you, uh, Dityana, Stefan and Mary, because I, I can't wait to hear more about um, Crisis 24 and the tools that we uh, partner with that help you to um, create visibility and, and better control uh, of your duty of care obligation. You're not off the hook yet here. We need to know your caffeine beverage of choice. <laughs> um, I don't drink coffee, believe it or okay. not. I, think I just found out, coffee? you know, I'm, I'm originally Dutch and I just, uh, the other week there was a survey that the Dutch are the, the okay. world's um, um, uh, top coffee drinkers, most uh, coffee a day. Uh, <laughs> Um, so believe it or not, I don't drink coffee, but I do yeah. drink about 10 to 15 cups of tea a day. Oh my goodness. So Where's I do get my, my uh, caffeine somehow. <laughs> okay. I think you and my husband are the last people on the planet who don't drink coffee, but that's good to know. <laughs> I wish I knew that before I married him, but that's another topic <laughs> for another day. <laughs> 
So thanks, here. It's always fun to share our new technologies and updates. Um, we've heard really positive feedback so far from our clients when it comes to Sherpa and trip kicks. And, you know, one of our philosophies at JTB Business Travel really is around common sense and the common sense approach. And it really says that when you're booking, you really need all this information in, in this new um, travel environment. But we're going to launch our first poll to make sure that we have everyone's attention. And today's topic, right, is duty of care. So we want to know, has your company's duty of care program changed or evolved in recent months? Is it something that is um, static? And we'll give everyone a couple of moments just to lock in their vote. Stefan, um, I'm going to refer to you. Are you seeing um, any kind of uptick in clients contacting you to evolve, modify duty of care program, or has it been you know, business as usual? No, it, it has definitely not been business as usual. Uh, we actually have um, seen a, a lot of clients or prospective clients engaging with us uh, during COVID just because there are less travels. So it's actually a good time to change uh, because the risk of the migration is much uh, lower uh, since there is no travel. So the impact on, on, on the change of provider is less significant. So we actually engaged in a, in a large number of RFPs um, because clients have time to challenge. Clients want to review uh, pricing options on the market. So again, it's uh, we are being challenged and that's normal. And, and equally, um, uh, other clients, other corporations are looking actively on the market to look at you know, what innovation, what system is more robust on the market. So it has been a very active from a business development standpoint. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's really interesting because duty of care, right, isn't a static situation. And from the results of the poll, it looks like 42% said, Yes, that it's evolved. And what's surprising to me is that 25% are saying that they don't have a duty of care program. And I think that's really important that they're here today because, you know, um, business travelers are, are skeptical and anxious, you know, when it comes to travel, right? There's so many more unknowns now. So companies have a responsibility and a liability to have a clear duty of care program in place that travelers can feel um, confident that should something go wrong, that there's a process in place, you know, that will take care of them. So let's just, go ahead. Mm -hmm. And just on that, um, it's not unusual. I think there is a misconception that these kind of programs are expensive or not accessible. If you are a small or medium company, you know, it's only accessible for very large organization. It's, it's far from the truth. We actually have, yes, we do have a very large and some of them are the largest companies in the world but equally we have clients who are kind of a small business with one or two people and through values and uh, travel management company or insurance program they can have access to our services so it's uh, not only useful it's also mandatory uh, from a legal standpoint and so it's and it, but more importantly it's accessible and, uh, yeah and i think that's um so important for companies to understand that no matter their size they can have something that um, makes sense, right, for their company Absolutely. of duty care. All right, so um, let's dig in. I know that you shared a little bit of the history of the company um, and how Crisis 24 came to be today, because right from a JTV standpoint, our relationship began when it was formerly IJA and WorldAware, and it's fascinating in terms of the timeline and how many diverse acquisitions that you've made along the, the way, because when JTB Wright was in the market, we're shopping around for risk management partners. Um, Crisis 24 was a really strategic choice because you're an industry leader um, in travel intelligence and technology. And like JTB, it's similar that you're a global company, but you understand the necessity, right, of localized knowledge. So um, can you talk about the span um, globally and the localized and, you know, you have analysts all over and talk to us about your your footprint there. Yeah, absolutely. So um, that was, um, again, when we came from Crisis 24 into Garda World, it was to acquire uh, a critical mass and, and very, 
some clients were global clients and they were telling us we need a global provider. So that was one of the main reasons behind the uh, acquisition. At the same time, uh, Gala World is made of uh, entrepreneurs and our chairman has acquired, made a lot of different acquisitions and but remain and kept all uh, almost all of the entrepreneurs who built this company so it was very important from very early on that we maintain that flexibility of of a small business within a wider group it's easier said than done to be honest because as we grow uh, we, we have to maintain that flexibility but it's very important it's in, it's in our dna and and also in our DNA is our geographical uh, coverage. We have teams, uh, not only of analysts, but also business and operations uh, in the US, in Canada, in the UK, in France, in Dubai, in Singapore. And we operate in more than 40 countries, most of the time high-risk countries. So that gives us a very um, operational touch. And we do understand, you know, the team is, I think we have more than 15 different nationalities just among the analysts. And if, if not more, um, wow. so that gives uh, a good sense of the difference of culture. I'm a dual citizen, and and I was, so again, I've worked in different work environments in Europe and, and in North America. So that gives us a different perspective on how we approach uh, the clients, and also a diversity in terms of of clients, because sometimes you know I meet with people and clients who tell us, you know, I'm not in the oil and gas industry, therefore I don't need a duty of care program. Guess what? Some of the largest luxury brands in the world have a duty of care program with us. And I can tell you that at first, uh, the creative director for uh, you know uh, some of the largest uh, luxury brands in mm -hmm. New York, in Paris, and Singapore mm -hmm. do not really care about our programs. But from New York, they go to Mexico. From Singapore, they go to the Philippines so, and, and other places. And then they need assistance, they need support, they need to be reassured. From Dubai, they go to Pakistan and they need that kind of, of coverage. And, and they're the first one actually to go back to us and, and ask for questions, which is good. So yeah. every everyone can be uh, definitely interested. And I mean, the resume is really nothing short of extraordinary because all of your players, not only globally, but expansive expertise backgrounds, right? There's There's people with experience in government agencies, military special operations, um, they truly understand, right, what travel risks exist um, and how to mitigate and recover. Yes, that was part, and again, it's part of our uh, DNA from the beginning. We, um, myself and, and almost all of our operational team members have been exposed abroad. We have had significant problems, so we know what it feels to be uh, on the wrong side of, of the situation, you know, being kidnapped or being uh, or somewhere else, somewhere uh, against your will. So, so we get that feeling, and I think it gives us um, a very different perspective on the situations. We have uh, the business acumen and business approach, so we also understand our, you know, corporate clients from a corporate perspective, and we try. Um, actually, we don't try. We succeed in mixing both and, and assisting our clients both with a corporate perspective and, uh, as we mentioned before, the liability and so on, the reputation. Uh, but also providing actionable uh, solutions to your people because at the end of the day that's the most important mm -hmm. yeah so with that let's go through you know the duty of care program and supporting um you know that travel restart i know that you have some talking points for us um and i see here you know disruption in time and space how we're have to, having to navigate um, in a new way and that everyone is a new traveler now. Yes, yeah, so, so so the disruption in time and space is something I want to, to focus very quickly on is um, it's the first time with COVID, you know, as we mentioned in the last 20 years, we had many different crises around the world, including the Fukushima and, and the like, you know, so very, a very big incident. But with COVID, it was the first time that there was not a specific territory, it's worldwide, and we don't know how long it's going to last. Like it started two years ago, uh, hopefully this will end soon, right. but, yeah. but when you look at Foreign Affairs, one of the main uh, magazines in, in international relations, they called it the forever virus. virus. Okay, so I, I, yeah. I don't mean to be pessimistic today. It's quite not going anywhere. But, yeah, it's like but, the but, flu now. <laughs> but it's going to last. So it's yeah. the first time we are in this kind of new uh, perspective, which has been very disrupting for even our largest clients 
were for the first time, um, um, you know, in a way blocked from repatriating people. That's the first time we were stuck with people being, uh, you know, uh, abroad and not being able to go come back to their home countries. So very challenging. Uh, and at the same time, as we said, our our job is to um, make sure that our clients can travel and can do it safely. So all of our effort is about uh, making sure that people feel safe and we can re-engage travel. So as you know, we have seen an uptake in travel, mostly domestic here in the U.S. and um, in uh, on the leisure side. Um, mm -hmm. The good uh, news is, as you mentioned before, is November 8th, our friends from Europe and other countries will be able to come back into the country. So I think that's going to facilitate a lot of international travel. When we look at the numbers, because we have you know, the travel tracking, um, so we know how many PNRs are being uh, booked. We are right now, if we look at October 2021, um, between 30 and 40% of, of the 2019 numbers. Okay, so there wow. is still a, a long way to go, but sure. there is a, a positive uh, increase over the past uh, few months. We do see, I think the challenge is the diversity of situation across the market and very much like the work from home policies where you know, I'm based in New York, you look at the financial industry and sector, most of the banks are asking their uh, team members and employees to go back to the office almost full time. And then you look at the West Coast and the uh, LinkedIn, Amazon, and they are you know, remote work forever. So. Um, where do we sit? And I think it's going to be the same for the travel ban. It's going to be the same for the travel restart policies. It's going to depend on on your business, on your corporate culture, um, on your, on your you know priorities. So it's going to take time to align that uh, on, on the market. In terms of of solutions, you know, one of the questions you asked me was how did our business model evolve? Uh, because of, of COVID. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say that overall, uh, the strategy and the business model remain quite the same. Uh, okay. we, we have adapted our solutions to meet the requirements. So it started yeah. with, uh, during COVID, uh, with more, you know, as you know, there are tons of regulations changing every day from one country to another. So providing actionable intelligence to our clients through what we call the BTRT, and the business travel reception tool is key. So I go from point A to point B to country B. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm French or I'm US and what are the requirements and so on. So um, that has been a key focus for for us. Um, and the two other aspects of, of our change um, or you know, increase in performance, one is on artificial intelligence. And this is directly linked to um, to COVID, it, it didn't start with COVID, but COVID accelerated the change. Mm -hmm. And because of the work from home, uh, you know, again, taking New York as an example, uh, years ago, uh, our intelligence was mostly focusing on Manhattan and LaGuardia and GFK and Newark, and not yeah. necessarily in the suburbs. But right. now, uh, if you are a worker, uh, if you are working from home in the suburbs of New York, you don't really care about Manhattan. You don't really care about LaGuardia because you're not traveling much, uh, but you do care about incidents happening around your neighborhood. Yes. And so that's more relevant to the end users. So we have, we started back in 2015 mm -hmm. uh, during the uh, terrorist attack in, in Europe, uh, but this is now significantly reinforced. So we have made different acquisitions in terms of uh, artificial intelligence because the level of granularity that is required is is so massive um, that we need um, some form of automation. So that's a big focus uh, for us. And, and the other one, on top of looking at you know monitoring the regulation, the other one is also uh, from a very practical standpoint, reviewing the protocols with our clients and right. you know, how can we support um, our clients when their people are um, stuck abroad. And, and given our footprint, we, uh, I mentioned we operate in, in 40 plus countries. Most mm -hmm. of these countries are, are of high risk areas, you know, whether it's Nigeria, Kenya, uh, Libya, uh, Iraq, and so on. And so if you have people working in these locations and they can't come back to their home countries because of specific regulations due to COVID, 
what mm-hmm. you do to support right. your people. And because we have that footprint, we have been able during COVID to support our clients directly on the ground. Um, sometimes in very challenging situations, like in Afghanistan in August, as you can imagine, but um, but in other countries as well. So that's uh, part of the focus as well. Yeah, because I think like for our travelers, right, you know, um, the value of a travel management company and a partnership is that anyone can book travel online, but they need us when things go wrong, right? And so they can rely on um, technology partners like Crisis24 to help them through these situations. So I I know that we talked a lot about, um, you know, your span and, and the coverage, but let's break it down because companies focus right on traveler safety has really accelerated and intensified in the past two years. Um, if you had to um, break it down, what would you feel are the most essential components of a solid duty of care program? Like what are the pillars that we're talking about? So in my view, there are uh, three pillars. Uh, one is prevention. And again, comparing with the medical sector, you want your doctor to prevent you from having any sickness, right? It, right. You don't want to go to the hospital. So it's a very much the same focus and our business model based on, on recurring subscriptions where you have access 24-7 to our services, um, not only in terms of intelligence and information before you go, but training, briefings, you know, I'm going to this destination. Um, I'm not sure if it's a, if I organize my trip correctly. Uh, which hotel should I choose in Lagos, Nigeria? What should I do? What kind of car provider can I use on the ground? Extra, extra. Anything that is going to be relevant for your trip is mm-hmm. essential. So prevention is is a big one. And and for us, it's trying to understand, trying to know what's going on around the world, and training the people. Uh, pillar number two is. Uh, everything around technology and monitoring, you know, and and now you have um, in the past may, maybe that companies had only one or two TMCs. Now you have uh, a lot of different acquisitions. So you we have large groups with a very complex organization with multiple TMCs. Some people book offline. Um, so you have uh, you need to have a very robust technology to integrate all of these various feeds. Um, I mentioned the work from home again. Travel is one significant component. It was and it's going to start again. Uh, HR feeds are a big one as well uh, because we need to have all of this uh, exposure and the location of the people when they work from home or remote locations. Sites yes. uh, is a key element as well uh, because uh, uh, just a, a quick example, back in September 2018, there was a major earthquake followed by a tsunami in Palu, Indonesia, in the middle of nowhere. So our operation center, you know, looked at the map, okay, no business travelers, no expatriates, that's fine, but there was a site. And there, this was the hotel of one of the largest hotel chain in the world. And so having that mapping right away, and we knew that, you know, the, the, the city was actually totally destroyed, we were able to anticipate that the hotel was most likely destroyed that we would have casualties, casualties to deal with. And so we dispatched a security and medical team on the ground right away because we had that visibility, even in a very remote part of the world. So it's, okay. so technology is, is key. On top of that, the monitoring. Um, and, and it goes back to the diversity of clients we have. Most of our clients, 99% of our clients, do not operate 24-7. Okay, okay. so... If you have a terrorist attack in London on a Saturday night on the London Bridge, who takes care of your people, right? Most of our clients are closed. So when I talk about technology and monitoring, it's all of this proactiveness that we deliver on behalf of our clients to make sure that we touch base with the employees on the ground and make sure they are they are safe. And mm-hmm. the third pillar is the operational assistance from, again, organizing a uh, journey management, so you arrive in Lagos or in, in Nairobi, Kenya, you want to have a secure transportation from the airport to your hotel or your office, uh, to all the way to uh, what we call the global response, whether it's emergency evacuation because there is a tsunami or political unrest or whatever, uh, or the kidnap for ransom business as well. And we are one of the two key players on the market um, on that front as well. So again, it's we have competitors focusing on intelligence, which is 
you know, great, but if you have the information, but I don't know where you are, I'm not able to cross check. So it's less relevant. If you right. have the tracking only, but not the Intel, it's also useless. And mm -hmm. if you have an easy operations side, then you wait until people are in trouble and that's not the good way to do it. So it's only the combination of the three pillars that makes a robust duty of care program. And I tend to believe that we are, if not the only one, um, at least you know the most robust player on the market because we invest a lot in these three pillars. Right, so it's a trifecta, prevention, technology, and operational assistance. Yes. So it's really great to understand, right, the pillars of this, um, but important, right, that companies embrace that it's a continuous cycle, right? They'll have to stop, evaluate, monitor, assess, mm -hmm. and um, Crisis24 would be the ideal partner then for them to enhance the company's incident response and, and their procedures. So thank you so much, Stefan, for your um, expertise and, and for chatting with us. We're gonna hang, um, hand over to Mary in just a minute, but I wanna la launch um, our last poll question because when it comes to travel, I think that we can all agree priorities are moving around like puzzle pieces in many ways. And for our audience, we wanna make sure that you're still checking in with us. Just take a moment to share your opinion. So when it comes to your priorities, um, your travel program, are you looking at price first? Um, and then you care about flexibility and safety. Um, is flexibility the most important thing to you, right? Um, maybe before you cared about booking something cheaper, but now you want something that could be exchanged or, um, you know, changed depending on your schedule, right? Things are happening um, in, in a minute. And so the last one is safety, your first priority, right? You're doing your pre-trip intelligence. You're making sure that, um, you know, where you're staying has, you know, good COVID protocol and things like that, and then price and then flexibility. So we'll give you a minute just to check in with us on how your priorities are, are moving around. And Mary, while they're voting, um, from your standpoint, what kind of opinions are seeing from your clients in priorities for their travel program? Yeah, from our perspective, we would always say safety is the number one priority when you're traveling, right? Um, and then of course, flexibility is a big number too right now with the COVID-19 pandemic because you never know when restrictions are gonna change or, um, you're going to have to quarantine yourself. So, uh, you know, right now there's just a lot of uncertainty around that. Yeah. And so I think that everyone would agree it's split 50-50. Some people are safety first and some travelers want flexibility and then they're checking on the safety. Because I think that, you know, restrictive fares now are a little bit more um, flexible, right? We're seeing things like airline operational meltdowns, which we recently experienced with Southwest, right? So price can't be the only factor. Travelers want safety, some kind of assurance that, you know, when if elements should change, that they're not stuck in the red or that they can't get from point A to point B um, without jumping through a couple of hoops, right? Um, so let's see, Crisis 24, right, um, we've talked how it's an end-to-end -end solution um, for our travelers and that they're covered. In our previous Tech Talk sessions, we covered what it looks like when it comes to pre-trip intelligence, that they can access specific pre-trip alerts during the trip, right, they have the actionable ad, um, advice relevant to their trip and then also the location and access to the WorldCube mobile app where they can check in if something should happen. Um, we've covered how JTB is even leveraging, right, Crisis24 as an extension of their security team with our traveler experience team. They're monitoring travel as well, 24-7, 365. Should something happen, um, we do take action and, and push out context to assess their needs. But we're going to shift gears and we want to hone in and focus on a really nice solution Crisis24 has in place. And we're talking about the WorldQ Companion. So um, Mary, as our partnership manager at Crisis24, can you walk us through some of the highlights I'm going to hand over to you? And then you can let us know when you're ready to share okay. the world. 
Absolutely. So uh, this is our WorldQ technology, and it's where you can see any alerts or intelligence that we're publishing and how it relates to travelers um, who are in the system. And we can also support people at home location and sites. But for this demonstration, I'm focusing on travelers. Uh, so basically, anything coming in that's happening around the world that we think might impact travel is going to be in this feed. Uh, we have three different criticalities of alerts, and it is based on the likelihood of their impact to business travel rather than uh, the level of threat. So you can see that um, one, this first one that we have is informational, meaning that it's something you need to be aware of, but it's not likely going to have a major impact on your business operations. Warning is something that may have an impact. And then critical is our highest threshold of alerts. And it's something that is definitely going to impact you. Um, so for example, this Italy alert about uh, new COVID restriction updates, that's definitely going to impact you if you're um, traveling in or around Italy. Um, the great thing about the platform is that you can easily click and see where you have people and whether or not they're going to be impacted. Um, so for example, this alert about protests in DC, you can see there are two people there um, currently today or through the alert. Um, since the alert's in the future, you might wanna pick that through the alert. And then from there, it's super easy to just click list actions and send them a message. So um, we have built-in templates where uh, you can just go ahead and pick one of those templates um, that there is going to be a protest during their travel. Mm -hmm. And it automatically populates with your company information here. And then you can customize it from there to let your travelers know that there is a protest. Um, we recommend you avoid the area. Um, and then any other special notes that you want to give them, maybe um, have them confirm their travel if there's going to be a transportation strike or something like that. So that is one quick and easy way to access where your travelers are. The other one is the world map, uh, which it gives the same information, but a lot of clients just like this view because um, you can see everything all in one, you can see the alert that's active here and where it overlaps with where you have people. Um, mm -hmm. And you can do all the same functions from here, um, send a message directly from the world map and um, contact your people directly. So what kind of feedback are you hearing um, you know, from your clients in utilizing the WorldQ Companion? Can you share some success stories? Yeah, sure. So, um, you know, they've found it really helpful, particularly during COVID, to have an, an exact, um, you know, idea of where their people are. Um, a lot of them at the beginning of the pandemic, especially, had, you know, people traveling and on the road and normal course of business and had to start identifying those people and finding ways to get them home. Right. Um, and, throughout the pandemic, we've continued to issue alerts about all of the different um, restrictions that are in place and how they've changed, um, which even in the US varies from state to state. So it's hard for you know one person to keep track of. So we're doing that for them, um, mm -hmm. which makes it a lot easier. Um, one really great story, we were able to help somebody who um, at the height of the pandemic uh, needed to get out of the country for a family emergency. and um, was able to find a restriction to help them get home or get back to see that family member um, in that urgent situation. So, yeah. um, you know, there are a lot of different ways people are using it, but the intelligence I think has been key in supporting um, mm -hmm. their people during the pandemic, uh, yeah. as well as helping them get back to travel now that um, things are more settled and business travel is starting to resume. Yes. Um, we have built in a business travel resumption tool, which is accessible. Um, a lot of clients have, you know, put this on their internet and allowed their people to use it. Um, yeah, because Stefan was saying it's a forever virus now, right? So yeah. <laughs> that's how so. I refer to it from now on, thanks to Stefan. So it's really important, right, that they have their hands on these kinds of tools that can help them. 
Correct. And so it's really easy to just pick where you're coming from and where you're going to and see the different restrictions are in place because it does vary, um, you know, even between one country to the next um, from where you can fly and where you can't and what you need to get in and out. And, um, you know, even the U.S., different states, you might need a different uh, level of restriction to enter into that state. So. Yeah. Um, it's been really helpful in terms of restarting travel. Can you take us back um, to the World Q Companion map, right? Because we were talking about um, different kinds of risks, right? Because when mm -hmm. I think about risks, I think about um, weather, terrorist attacks, protests, and things like that. But when it comes to COVID, how were the related alerts being calculated? Like what kind of barometer um, was Crisis 24 using because how's risk defined? In the beginning, everything was super critical. Borders are closing, you know, super strict entry requirements. Like, what have you learned from the beginning and how has Crisis 24 realigned from the forever virus? Well, the approach is still the same. If it's um, critical, if it's going, if it's a different restriction or a change in restrictions, it's definitely going to impact your business. And that's something that we would still flag as critical um, if it's going to have that impact. And so now is a great time. If anybody has any questions, um, we want to definitely be able to weave them in. We're um, approaching the 15 minute mark towards the end of the session. Um, I do have a last question for you, Mary, is that when it comes to, you know, the World Q app or companion, do you see that travelers are using it like differently now uh, more than previously? Have you had to make cho changes to the tool um, and the app to accommodate? Um, I mean, definitely we've seen the primary risk shift from on the road to there are risks at home people need to be aware of. Um, the nice thing about the WorldQ app is that it doesn't require travel to use that information. We have pushed notifications based on your location if you enable it. Um, we did have that before the pandemic, luckily, so we didn't have to make any huge changes. But um, you know, it's really nice that they can receive real-time notifications for incidents that impact their home location, and it could be, you know, COVID-19 restrictions or severe weather like a hurricane or um, even civil disruption or protests that are near their home and they need to be aware of and try to avoid. Yeah, absolutely. So, I want to thank um, Stefan and, and Mary for sharing all of your wisdom with us, knowledge and insights. I know that duty of care can be intimidating. It's such a broad topic, but I think you've covered so much in terms of what a robust and effective program um, is possible and, and can be achieved. So we want to say thank you. Thank you for you for Thanks. having us. Yes, you're welcome. And so that concludes today's um, Tech Talk. Looking ahead is a friendly reminder to join our upcoming webinars. I can't believe that we're talking about 2022 just yet, but here we are. And um, so definitely join us and look out for those announcements. Um, we know that Crisis 24 is an ultimate technology duty of care partner for your company in this new and changing landscape. So please contact your client development manager um, with any questions about how you can implement Crisis 24 today for your duty of care program. I wanna say a big thank you again to Stefan and Mary and thanks to all those of you who have um, logged in with us for these three sessions all together. I hope that you walk away feeling great about the technology that's at your fingertips. Here's our contact information should you have any questions and we look forward to chatting with you all and we'll see you soon. Bye now. Bye. Bye.